Okay, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this one, so let's get straight to business. This episode, it's finally time to talk the basics on female Transformers. It's no secret that the Transformers franchise has never been the most inclusive one when it comes to female characters, with the biggest steps to counteract that only taking place within the last few years. But there were attempts to include female characters right from the very beginning that didn't make it through. When creating the profiles for the first-year Transformers characters back in 1983, Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky originally intended for the Autobot medic Ratchet to be female. That's why he's named after Nurse Mildred Ratchet from the novel and film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Hasbro shot the idea down, not wanting any female characters in their boy's toy line. And this rule was adhered to for the entire Generation 1 toy line. No toys of female characters were made, and in 1989, in issue number 53 of the Marvel Transformers comic book, Budiansky even went so far as to establish that in the Marvel Universe, Transformers did not have genders. Though this was in defiance of the fact that the Transformers had been gendered since literally the first issue of the comic by the use of male pronouns to refer to them. There was a similar push for inclusivity during the very, very early development of the Generation 1 animated series, when writer Jeffrey Scott invented several original female Transformer characters as part of a pitch to sell the series to CBS. When it was decided that the cartoon would be produced for syndication rather than network television, and story editors Bryce Malick and Dick Robbins were placed in charge, they reviewed Scott's work and quickly junked the female characters because they weren't part of the toy line. Now, the cartoon did get a little closer to including female robots than the comic did, but they weren't actually Transformers. There was the human-built ninja robot Nightbird, and the shape-shifting alien mermaid Alana, who temporarily assumed a robotic form. And that might have been as far as it ever would have gotten if it hadn't been for writer Ron Friedman. While working on the screenplay for The Transformers the Movie in early 1985, Friedman pushed for the inclusion of a female Autobot in the film, citing the fact that his own daughter loved this stuff. He described the process as a battle, but in the end, he got his way, leading to the creation of R.C. But the impact of this decision was felt by audiences even before the film hit theaters in summer 1986. Not long after Friedman won his battle, work began on the cartoon episode The Search for Alpha Trion, which aired in late 1985 and introduced female Autobots into the cartoon universe. The episode featured Elito One as the leader of a guerrilla cell of female Autobots, including Chromia, Moonracer, Firestar, and others. No explanation for female robots was deemed necessary in the cartoon. They simply existed the same way the male robots did, though the episode did attempt to justify why we hadn't seen any before then. Female Autobots! I thought they were extinct! Though Elita's team would only appear in this single episode, the genie was out of the bottle. In addition to RC, later episodes of the cartoon would feature other female robots, like the rebel leader Beta, while RC herself would even appear in the Marvel comic published in the UK. Of course, a few years later, when Budiansky wrote that story that explicitly identified the Transformers as genderless in the comics universe, UK writer Simon Furman needed to come up with an explanation for RC's presence, and did so in an origin story that explained she had been created by the Autobots to appease the demands of a mob of human feminists. <sighs> And prototypes exist that indicate Hasbro considered making a toy of RC, but it didn't come to pass. Like I said, no female toys were released during Generation 1. By Hasbro. In Japan, however, the first female Transformers toy was released by Takara in 1988. The Autobot medic Minerva, a character from the Super God Master Force series, who was a recolor of the Autobot headmaster Nightbeat. It was also in Japan that the first female Decepticons were introduced in 1990's Transformers Victory manga, Esmeral and Lysak. The first female Decepticon toy, and the first female Transformer toy of any kind available in America, 
was Night Racer, a recolor of the Autobot High Beam available exclusively at the official Transformers convention Botcon in 1995. It was the launch of the Beast Wars toy line the next year that finally saw the first female Transformer toys released at American mass retail. The Predacon Black Arachnia, followed by the Maximal Air Razor in 1997. But though the Beast Wars cartoon stylized their appearances so their gender couldn't be in doubt, their toys hadn't been designed as female from the outset. Like Minerva and Night Racer, Black Arachnia's was just a recolor of a male toy, the Predacon Tarantulas. While Air Razor had originally been envisioned as male, only for the pronouns in the toy's character profile to be changed to female at the request of the Beast Wars cartoon's writers, as they wanted to include a second female character in the show. But it was only a year later, in 1998, that the very, very first Transformers toy that had been designed with the intent that it be a female character from the very beginning was released. The Transmetal Incarnation of Air Razor. Beast Wars finally broke the dam. After it, female characters would become increasingly commonplace in toy lines and media, though of course they were and are still massively outnumbered by their male counterparts. The Unicron trilogy, especially, was so lacking in them that the English-language version of Transformers Cybertron actually changed the gender of the character Override from male to female at the request of Cartoon Network in order to increase female representation on the show. But when female Transformers do appear, they're treated as a normal part of the Transformers world. Like the Generation 1 cartoon, the vast majority of Transformers media has felt no need to explain the existence of female robots, and they've shown up in every major Transformers universe, from Transformers Animated, to the live-action movies, to the aligned continuity. And though there's always a tendency for new stories to simply default to using the most famous classic female Autobot, RC, and to giving them slender bodies with pronouncedly human proportions, some creators have striven to find ways of breaking this mold, seeking out toys who lacked gendered pronouns in their character profiles and retroactively assigning them female identities, like Beast Wars Sonar, Armada Ironhide, or Energon Treadbolt. The only exception to all of this came in the form of Simon Furman's work on IDW Publishing's comic books. Having always questioned why a robotic species would, quote, have genders at all, Furman adhered to the old Marvel approach, presenting the Transformers as genderless, despite their use of male pronouns, and this time explained away RC's existence as the product of an experiment conducted by the mad scientist Giaxis to forcibly insert gender into the species, which involved a Transformer undergoing what was essentially a forced sex reassignment. Oof. Eventually, Hasbro took a crack at providing an answer to the question of why robots would have gender in the early 2010s, when they introduced the character of Solus Prime, one of the original 13 Transformers from Cybertronian prehistory and the ancestor of all female Transformers. At the dawn of their race, it was explained, Cybertronians didn't have any comprehension of gender, but Solus was viewed as unique among her siblings for the way in which her mind processed information, which made her the only one able to operate the creation lathe that she used to forge their weapons and artifacts. This attribute was passed down to Solus's descendants, and it became the way that Cybertronian society separated itself into two types. Transformers who processed information the way Solus had, and those who didn't. Upon encountering alien races that divided themselves into gender, Cybertronians adopted the practice as a way of putting the difference that they observed in themselves into words, with Solus's descendants taking on female pronouns and the rest of the species using male ones. Now, the fact that Solus had been the only female among the original 13 also served as an in-universe explanation for the real-world phenomenon of female Transformers being less common, as they existed at only a ratio of 1 in 13. But this made it seem as if women were some kind of aberration, a deviation from the majority of so-called normal Cybertronians, placed on the same level as being a minicon, or a combiner, or a beast. 
and it wasn't long before other media took steps to rectify that. In 2013, when Hasbro held the first fan-built bot poll that allowed fans to communally create a brand new Transformers character who would then be turned into a toy and featured in IDW's comics, the new robot's gender was voted to be female. And obviously, given that the IDW universe had established that female Transformers didn't exist in it, something needed to change. New writers John Barber, James Roberts, and Mergrid Scott retconned away Furman's vision of a genderless Cybertron, establishing that male and female Transformers did exist. It was just that, through still unrevealed means, all female Transformers had vanished from Cybertron millions of years ago, leaving an all-male population who only thought they were genderless because they had no understanding of the concept. But female Transformers still existed in plentiful quantities, far more than 1 in 13, on Cybertron's colony planets. And it was from one of these, Caminus, that the new fan-built bot, Windblade, hailed. The introduction of the colonies saw many female characters join the comics. Old characters from past toy lines and series like Elita One and Chromia, and brand new ones like Nautica and Aileron, in prominent starring roles to an extent that no Transformers media had ever used female characters before. And fans clearly couldn't get enough of it because when Hasbro ran their second fan-built bot poll in 2015, it resulted in the creation of another new female character, the first ever all-female combiner, Victorion. IDW's new, more nuanced approach to gender even extended to the introduction of transgender Transformers, Anode and Lug, a pair of Cybertron natives who transitioned from male to female upon encountering alien races and gaining a deeper understanding of the concept. These developments have been paired with a slight but noticeable increase in other female toys, while Windblade has leapt from comics to cartoon, starring in 2015's Robots in Disguise alongside female characters with more diverse body types like the Autobot police cadet Strongarm, and she's also set to appear in the upcoming Transformers Cyberverse cartoon, along with female Decepticons Slipstream and Shadow Striker. Add that to the news that the live-action Bumblebee movie will feature a brand new female Decepticon named Shatter as one of its lead villains, and it's clear, though it's been an uphill battle, female Transformers aren't going anywhere. And those are the basics on female Transformers. Let's hear about some of your favourite ladies in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell while you're down there, and if you can, please consider supporting the show on Patreon, where you can pick the subjects of future episodes.